Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Yeah, I am grateful uh, to be here. I'm grateful uh, for each and every one of you who is here tonight um, here in Bible study. And as I always say, those who are uh, on their way, we are grateful uh, for them and for you. And uh, we're going to get into our uh, lesson tonight. I do want to remind everyone, uh, the influencers 18 to 35 will be having prayer um, here at the church, an immersive prayer experience uh, this Friday the 19th. So um, God's presence most certainly will be in the room. So we're looking uh, for you uh, to be here in the room as well. It will be an awesome, awesome time in the Lord. Um, also, uh, and I'll close with this announcement as well. Um, I'm really, really, really so excited um, that we have McRest coming around. Uh, again, it's been some years since we've been able uh, uh, to facilitate that since before uh, the pandemic. So um, we're getting back into that and signups are here. Um, so the, the sign-up table for McRest is available here in the building uh, uh, for all those, now I'm 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 gonna say this. Um, I was gonna say all those who want to sign up, but this ain't about a want. Uh, this is a church-wide uh, uh, endeavor, so um, this is an expectation, a requirement. It's gonna take everybody to make this work and to work well. Uh, the beautiful thing about McRest is, depending upon your schedule, what you can do, and things of that nature, there's something for everybody. There's something for everybody, so don't count yourself out. There's lists and uh, different types of work and, and different timing uh, for work and things to be done, uh, so don't count yourself out. There's a lot of different things uh, to be done, and I'm sure there's at least one or two things um, that will be conducive to your schedule, so uh, we want everybody to go find what works uh, for you in terms of your timing and uh, uh, sign up. We're going to have some more presentations where we talk in more depth about McRest for those who aren't familiar with it, um, don't know what it is, but uh, we're housing uh, the homeless for a week. They'll be here for a week um, in our facility. We feed them, pack them lunches, um, uh, uh, provide showers, place, place to sleep for them, uh, provide dinner every evening and fellowship. Um, so it's kind of a round the clock thing uh, for us. They do go out and kind of, uh, they have to simulate a work day so they don't just lounge around all day here. We drop them off at a spot and either many have jobs um, or go look for work or, you know, but they, they don't just stick around here all day. Um, they'll, uh, get up first thing in the morning so we cook breakfast early in the morning um, for them uh, wash clothes and bedding and things of that nature so there's a lot of things for us to do and we pride ourselves because it's Macomb County uh, rotating emergency shelter um, so they move from church to church and they spend a week at a church and then the next week at another church and there's 52 weeks out of the year uh, they rotate I mean, prior to the pandemic, McRest, it would be all 52 weeks. Now, McRest has a facility that some of the weeks they're there, but they're ro rotating between churches. And it is our, uh, we pride ourselves on feeding them the best. That's, that's our MO. And, and that's the word that, and the feedback we like to receive uh, from our guests is if they didn't enjoy nothing else at LAM, they're going to enjoy their meals, their dinners. We, we take pride, on, pride in that, um, as well as being hospitable, sharing the gospel, treating them extremely, extremely well with the love of Christ. So, um, again, this is an opportunity for us to be the hands and feet of God, and we need absolutely everyone. This is an all hands on deck endeavor. All hands on deck. So um, we want everyone to sign up. And the table is here uh, in the building for those who will be here. Uh, we'll also get some online signups going here uh, really soon. So um, let's get into our lesson tonight. It is my intent because um, I've already 
uh, uh, preached on this topic before, so um, I don't have to start from scratch. So it's my intent uh, to be brief tonight and enjoy some of the sunlight that's out there uh, today before uh, after class. Um, so we are in the Beatitudes, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter number five, and we are on verse nine. And also, everybody, I want you, I can't, uh, we have a wonderful treat for you on Sunday, so I want everybody to be excited to be at church, to everybody to be at church on Sunday, there's a great treat, a uh, surprise treat for you on Sunday, so everybody be here uh, this coming Sunday, got a wonderful, wonderful treat uh, for you. So Matthew chapter number five, verse nine, I'm going to read starting at verse one out of the English Standard Version down to verse nine, and it says this, seeing the crowds. He went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to see him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And our verse today, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for being who you are. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for peace we have with God. Through his son, Jesus Christ, we're grateful for it tonight. So we stand here grateful for peace and we want to be producers, makers of peace everywhere we go. So we're asking that you would instruct us by your word and we are listening and we will respond in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called. Blessed are the peacemakers. So, uh, uh, they shall be called the sons of God. Uh, highlights here is blessed peacemakers called. Blessed peacemakers called. That's those, those are the three things I want to highlight tonight. Blessed peacemakers called. And what's important about this, and again, we've kind of been building uh, uh, this lesson and, and hopefully each one is a little easier for us to grasp as the whole idea of blessed is what? It is observational. Hey sis, good to see you. It's observational. It is something that with the right set of lenses you can see and it causes a response, right? Now, this particular beatitude is one of the first ones that indicate others will respond. They will be able to see. Who you are will cause a particular response from them. So what's important about this one, and I, I, it, being a peacemaker, is if you are a peacemaker, the same way a nice car compels us to say ooh or ah, if you're a car person, I don't know what, 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 what you are, you know, it might be a house, a car, a nice pair of shoes, a nice garden. I know it's spring and people are getting their yards together. You might be a home and garden person like my dear sister Nancy, right? So you see a nice setup, you go, wow, that's nice. They didn't get that stuff from Home Depot. That's English gardens right there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like you, it, it causes you to speak, to seek further and make uh, 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 and make declarations and observations about what you see. Because y'all know when you see the difference between, you know, that ain't the cheap stuff. That's the good stuff right there. Especially when you know that particular area. When you're familiar with it, everybody else can be calling it nice. But when you know the real deal, you're like, mm -mm, that ain't it. Sorry, they're fooling everybody, but that ain't the real thing. You know, if you're into watches and you know a fake one, say, like, oh, he had a Rolex on. And you'd be like, mm -mm. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> you know, and that's what's so important about this particular beatitude is it comes from a very educated place. So blessed 
happy, fortunate, but also it is an observation. I love this beatitude in what we call blessed and fortunate. I want you to know if you can't tell, if you can't tell, I need you to know the people that you see that are in your life, if it's not you, if it's you, but if it's not you and you observe the people who make it their business, who their disposition is a peacemaker, where they broker peace, they cause peace to happen, they bring peace to situations. If you did not know, that is a blessed person. If you know someone that their desire is for peace, they make peace. They bring people together and say, now, nah, all right, we all here. We getting ready to talk about this. Or they're the people that don't propagate because I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but they're the ones that don't propagate the misunderstanding. They, they, they're the ones that go, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a different way to look at that. I know that's possible, but that's the worst case scenario. There's also a, a, a better way to read this than that. You know? The people that are exercised and creating the best case scenario. Guesses. If you did not know, I want you to have a keen eye for these people. From now on, those people are blessed and those are the people you want to be in relationship with. I don't know what you look for in potential friends, in potential spouses and mates, but I promise you the people that are peacemakers, they are peaceable. Those are blessed people. They might be walking, taking the bus, riding a bike, but guess what they are? Blessed. And the reason why is because peacemaking is a result of already having inner peace. I'm going to cut to the chase. People with inner peace then, because what's inside, comes out right that's what we know Jesus teaches us it's not what goes into a man that defiles him it's what comes out because it is an indicator of what's inside so if peace comes out of someone what does that mean they got peace inside and typically the people that like stirring on fights, that like keeping up mess, that like making people mad at other people, that like instigating, guess what they lack? A lot of times they're miserable and they don't want to see nobody else happy. That's why you got to be careful who you talk to about your relationship. But it always baffles me. Why would you go to a single and frustrated person to talk about your marriage? Why would you ever? Why would you ever? A guy that thinks all women are you know what? Why would you ever go to talk to him about your relationship? Why would you ever? I, that's why I, I love him and leave him. That's your whole problem. Why would you ever? If she mad at me and she gonna be mad at your husband, don't, don't, she ain't the one you want to talk to. Girl, that's why you ought to leave him. No, you, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. One of the reasons Jesus makes this declaration about peacemakers is because it is an indication of something that is internal not just external because you have a hard time making peace if you don't have internal peace so this is an observation you and I must have is if a big house a nice car a nice watch nice shoes nice hairdo nice garden or yard if these are things that attract your attention peacemaking ought to attract your attention from now on moving forward 
That's the key of these Beatitudes is Jesus is keying us in on things that have value and maybe you didn't know it. What was the name of that show? I don't know if it's still on, but I used to watch it all the time. It was one of those random shows where people would take stuff they found in their attic or in their house to the guy and he would appraise it. And the little treasure trunk would open up and it would say, Bring, this is how much what you found is worth. Does anybody remember that show? Antique Roadshow. That's, I love that show. Antique Roadshow. So it would be like this. If you're not familiar with it, it would be like this. Uh, you know, it's almost like a, 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 a market where people would be selling things. And people would bring th old things that they found in their house to this appraiser to see if it was worth anything. And some of this was junk that had been in their parents' house for years, covered in dust and old, and looked like most of us would probably throw it away. But they would bring it to the appraiser who had knowledge of said things and say, this has been in my mama's attic for, for 30 years. And the appraiser would say, oh. Or they would say, I bought this at a garage sale. My God. For five dollars, can you tell me what this is? And the praise will go, oh wow. This comes straight from the 18th century. And based upon this detailing here, you can tell that this, this dinette set, you know, came from this place and that place. And this marking here is how you know where it came from. Blase Splee, you bought this for five dollars at uh, an auction. And what I appraised this at, and the little trunk would come up and it would open up. It was like, Bring, this dinette set is worth $30,000. Now, the only thing I didn't like about that show is they ain't never had nobody like me on there. Because the people would just go, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow, really? Thank you. Now, if they'd have had your boy on that show, I'd have made a plum fool of myself. I'd have been on the phone. Yo, we up. <laughs> Mama, we up. <laughs> <laughs> this man just told me we got $30,000. Where we going? I'd have been doing car wheels. They would just go, oh, wow. It's like, you better be happy than that. He just told you that vase that been in your grandmother's basement since you was a kid is worth $100,000. But it was an educated appraisal of something that may appear to be junk to the untrained eye, but to the one who knows how it was made, when it was made, they can tell you something valuable about it that you might not immediately recognize. And this is the same thing Jesus, the son of God, his insight, his keen observation is, I know they might be dusty and been in the basement for a long time, but let me tell you about somebody that's more valuable than you may know. If they're a peacemaker, Oh, they better than having a million dollars in your pocket. Blessed are the people. They are fortunate. They are happy if they're a peacemaker. Blessed peacemaker. I told you when I preached this message about this, and if, if um, for the sake of time, you can go back and watch it on YouTube or Facebook. I should have looked up what week it was that I preached it, but I think it was back in uh, late February or something. But blessed are the peacemakers. What we make and what we spend time producing says a lot about what's inside and we are shaped by what we choose to make. Like what it takes to make something you have to become what it takes to make it. You have to become what it takes to make it. So if you choose to make peace, you have to become peaceful. That's why what you and I choose to make is very, very important because it will require some things of you. So that's another reason why peacemakers are blessed because they are made something great in the process. For instance, now here's a great takeaway and this is, a, this, is, this is something practical you have to get good at doing intentionally. 
And for some people, this is natural, but for most of us, this takes work. Is when someone has offended you or someone you know or love, they've offended you, they've done something that harmed you, embarrassed you, or you didn't like, and they walk away or it happens in public. Guess what most of our default is? Whether it happened to us or we observed it happen. When we retell the event, the default for most of us is what? We can imagine the worst case scenario regarding their intentions. I'm going to tell you exactly why they did that. And guess what we typically go to do? That's because they ain't like, girl, that you look better than them that day. And you showed her up. She was mad that your dress looked like that. That's why she spilt that on. She was mad. She saw how everybody was looking at you. Like we're really good at producing these very evil movies about people's intentions when we don't know them. Oh, he ain't give you that job. He knew you was better than him and he show you up in front of the bosses if he let you in that meeting. That's why he didn't. Like we're really good at that. But from now on, since we believe blessed are the peacemakers, guess what we are intentionally going to learn to do? Imagine the best case scenario. If we don't know and we're making up the story, you don't know, you're making up the story. We're using creative license, aren't we? <laughs> you're making it up either way. And for many of us, the worst case scenario feels better because then you can be mad at them. You can stay mad at them for how they made you feel. But the peacemaker, if my job is to make peace, now I have to intentionally become someone that does not give in to the reaction of reinforcing my feelings about the person. And I have to be the kind of person that can stop and force myself to say, what is the best case scenario? for why they did what they did. Is it possible that maybe she was embarrassed, she was sleepy, he didn't see you, he saw his grandbaby on the other side of the room and he was rushing over to see his grandbaby, that's why he tripped over you, he didn't see you, he was excited to see his granddaughter. Because I saw him holding and bouncing his granddaughter just a couple minutes later. So is it possible that it wasn't even about you? He didn't see you. He saw his grandbaby. I'm not saying it's okay. He stepped and scuffed your brand new shoe. But is it possible he didn't even see your shoes? Is it possible? And y'all know I do that and they be like... <laughs> I guess it's possible, but it feels much better to say he was hating on my Jordans. It feels, that, that feels better. But I'm going to tell you, this is why being a peacemaker is blessed because I am not comforted by evil. What does it say about us if we are comforted by the negative? If we are more receptive to evil reports than good reports. And I wasn't here, I, I, but, but, but who will believe the report of the Lord? Okay. If you're going to receive God's report, you got to get practiced at receiving positive. Okay. I'm trying to help you a little bit. You're, you're blessed if you're a peacemaker because you position yourself to receive good news. Because I promise you, what God ain't going to do is dog somebody to you. He's going to say crazy stuff like pray for them. God ain't said that. <laughs> oh, I don't receive that. God ain't said forgive them. Do you know what they did to me, God? God, you're not going to tell me to give them the scarf that go with the jacket they stole from me out the coat room. Pastor, I know you telling me, is it possible that they got a coat that looks similar? No, nah, she know mine cashmere. I ain't seen her in nothing. But she know the difference between cashmere and that cheap stuff I see on her. Like, yeah, that feels better. 
But you're going to have a hard time if you practice receiving and allowing that report to settle in your heart when God shows you that same person and says, pray for them. They're going through a difficult time. If he shows you a prophetic word concerning the fact that they're going through depression and anxiety, it's a reason why they couldn't see your coat. They ain't been able to see straight in six months since they lost their mother. Like God wants to share reports with you, but we're so practicing receiving evil reports. But peacemakers are practiced in receiving good reports. And not only receiving them, but sharing them. Because y'all know it's hard when your friend and it's a group of folks because we love power. Oh, yep, I saw her look at your shoes sideways. I seen her when she first walked in. Because that's all it takes. We start piling on the narrative. She stepped on my shoes because she knew they looked better than hers. Matter of fact, when she first walked in, I saw her look at them. It's hard in that room to go, is it possible, y'all? Can I interject in the pylon? Is it possible she was rushing over to see somebody else? Is it possible? The room was crowded. Is, oh, they're going to be mad at you. Because he didn't say they're going to like you. He said they're going to call you the son of God. And they killed the son of God. And just for the record. Oh, y'all missed that part. He said, say, bless are the peacemakers because everybody is going to love you. And they're going to love having you to the party. No, you won't get invited to some parties if you're a peacemaker. You'll get kicked out of some group chats. Be a peacemaker. They're going to create a whole separate chat. You'll be like, ain't nobody said nothing in a long time. That's because they're talking crazy in the other chat because they don't want the peacemaker in there. But here's a beautiful, here's another reason why peacemakers are blessed. Because after a while, you don't get to hear all the mess. And you get a whole lot of peace. Because they leave you out of the mess. If they want another group chat, I promise you, that's going to increase peace in your life. Your phone is going to buzz a whole lot less. You ain't going to have to hear about all of the ugly, nasty gossip. You will be blessed by being a peacemaker. You remove yourself from that cycle of toxicity. You bless yourself. People don't believe me. Most of us don't like coworkers for no other reason. They didn't do nothing to you, but you heard what they did to other people. Stay away from her. She the one gone. And what you can't do is get caught in a meeting with him. And don't let no get put on a project with him over there. Now you ain't nobody's done anything. You ain't no, nobody's done anything to you, but you've received all of this gossip. And now you hate half your co-workers and you don't even know their name. I got to get up out of here. It ain't no good people in what? Be a peacemaker and watch. All of the work gossip will stop. You won't hear any of it. I share this lesson. I, many of you have heard me share it over and over again, and I will share it again. One of the reasons God hates what? Discord. Gossip. And you know how you stop gossip? Not by not listening, but by being a peacemaker. Peacemakers are blessed because they are the mainline defense to gossip. See, a lot of people think their job and stopping gossip is to just not listen. Now, if you're weak or you're new or you're struggling, that's a good start. Is I'm not listening. But you know what the real blessed person is? Is they stop gossip by making peace. And it's uncomfortable sometimes. If you have heard me say it, I do it at work. Well, I don't get to do it as much now because I'm remote. But when we was all in office... And you know, all of the work, gossip, and mess. All of the office politics is happening. And where I worked, leadership had offices around the perimeter and then everybody else sat in the middle in cubicles. So if somebody has some, something juicy to share, you know this, if you had an office, 
They're going to come in your office and close the door because you can't talk but so crazy in the cubicles. But if you got a door on your office, I'm coming in and I'm telling it all. So they come into my office to tell all the gossip, but they didn't know I'm a peacemaker. I don't just not gossip. I'm a peacemaker. So I'm going to let you tell me everything about Susan. I'm like, yeah, she did what? And then what else she do? Susan did that. And did you ask her not to do that anymore? You did. You said, don't say that to me anymore. Okay. And then what she say back? Oh, and they think I'm, oh, they just really dig it. And I told her, don't you ever. And then what she say? I let him get it all out. Susan did all of that. Yes. I said, okay. Sit right here. I got all my notes. Open the door. Susan. <laughs> Susan. Oh, no, 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 stay right there. Because I can't believe you even talk right. You told her. Why that? Uh, 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 uh. Susan, when you wrap up your call, can you come see? No, don't go nowhere. We're going to wait till she get off the phone. Susan, come in here. Have a seat. Now, what you say Susan did? <laughs> tell her. No, 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 no. And you said you told her. No, tell it all. Tell it all. Why the Oh. You, <laughs> you want to talk about watching the blood drain from people's faces when Susan on her way into the office. Cause, cause, because peacemakers, that is something that is produced. It's not conflict avoidance, it's peacemaking. That's why I say just not listening is avoidance. Peacemaking is an active engagement where you stop conflict you address it so it's something that has to be produced and making things is an uncomfortable process at times so it was uncomfortable but I got to like it yeah don't go nowhere I, I, I got a meeting coming up that's okay I'll tell them I held you over Who, who's the meeting with I'll email him right now Bob <laughs> Janet can't come to the meeting she'll be a few minutes late She's in with myself and Susan. Sinned. You good. If he upset, he'll be upset with me. Susan's finishing up her phone call. Now, there's a couple of things I want you to know. Being a peacemaker is a blessed business. Now, folks was mad at me. I was in some very awkward, you can imagine the kind of awkward conversations I was in. Because then people would start backtracking. I ain't never said that. Like, you was just saying that here. No, what I really had meant was, but there would be oftentimes a couple of things would result. Since we're actually talking to each other now, all of the animosity that was built up about those made ups, remember those worst case scenarios I told you about? There would be one event and then six made up worst case scenarios and we would dispel all the worst case scenarios and what you would be left with is a misunderstanding that could be cleared up very easily. But most people aren't interested in, in making peace. They are interested in owning their feelings. So I'd rather own feeling aggrieved than doing the work of creating clarity because I might find out I don't have a reason to feel aggrieved anymore. So we would create clarity and we would create an understanding and there would be peace. And some people became friends because they laughed over the misunderstanding. A second thing would happen is we would root out the devil. And I mean that literally and figuratively. Sometimes the devil in the office is the one that's sowing seeds on both sides of the fence. And what you find out is there was somebody in the middle of y'all that was telling lies to both sides. And what they banked on is neither one of you getting in the room together. And as soon as you get in the room together, you're going to say, well, I heard that you said 
Well, who told you that? Well, I don't want to say. Now, that's a rule in my office. You don't get to bring up anything anybody said unless you can say who said it. If you can't say who said it, ain't nobody said it. I this isn't really what I wanted my class to be about tonight, but it's going to be about this. I need you to have the skills on how to make peace. It's a genuine skill set. Because I want to help you identify somebody that ain't for peace. Is if they can't put their name on it, don't take it from them. If they got information for you that they can't put their name on, don't take it. You can't tell nobody I said it, but then don't say it. If I can't tell people you told me, don't tell me. That's having peace 101. Because you got to have peace to make peace. So having peace 101 is not taking a package that ain't got a name on it. That's like at the airport. If you see a package or a suitcase with nobody with it, don't go pick it up. Call the police. That's a bomb. Unattended package. Bomb. News information with no name on it. Bomb. If they can't put their name on it, don't take it. Don't tell nobody. I t if I can't tell, I'm telling you right now, if I can't tell nobody you told me, don't tell me. Because I'll be like, <laughs> don't be mad at me. Rebecca said it. Oh, I'm snitching. And I'm snitching immediately. They ain't even going to have to. So that's having peace one-on-one. -on -one. Making peace is then requiring... No, 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 no. You got to tell us who shared that information. And if you can't tell us who shared that information, how reliable do you believe that information is? Because I promise you, anything I tell you, you could tell the whole world I said it. Post it on Facebook and put my name under it. Because guess what it is? The truth. And you can be mad at me for telling the truth. People have been mad at me for much less. Well, Chris said it. Y'all wait right here. Chris, you got a few minutes. Can you come in here? And what we find out is the devil been in this. We got two good people that have been receiving messages from the devil and believing lies from the enemy. And light exposes the enemy. So sometimes we find out they've got a misunderstanding. Sometimes we find out we got the devil in the middle. And that's not a misunderstanding. There has been lies, discord, sown. Because he hates those who sow discord amongst the brethren. Y'all know most of us aren't the discord sowers. We are the recipient of the seeds of the discord sowers. So much church hurt comes from the recipients, somebody sowed a seed in you. And the, and, and the reason why God hates people who sow discord is because it's seeds. It takes one person to throw a thousand seeds. One person can tear up a church throwing enough seeds. Because, you know, you can take a whole handful of seed and scatter it on the ground. And there are people that sit in church and scatter seeds of discord. They paint the worst picture of people's intentions. They paint the worst picture of the pastor's intentions. They paint the worst picture of the choir and praise team leader's intentions. They paint the worst picture of the security. They told you don't park there, not because your car was raggedy, but it's a fire lane. They let people with nice cars park wherever they... Who, what? As I told you, I don't like the, the, the conversation around church that's happening out in the public sphere because it is the worst case scenario regarding the intentions of the church. Pastors taking people money. Do you know the average salary of a pastor in these United States is less than $50,000? You ain't taking nobody at all the money if you're making less than $50,000. That is the average church pastor salary in these United States in the year of our Lord, 2024, is less than $50,000 a year. 
but let the conversation tell it. The pastor is taking all the money. I want to tell the people, if it's that easy to take all the money as a pastor, be one and go get the money. If it's that easy. If just by calling yourself a pastor, people just start throwing money at your feet and paying your bills and putting you in a Mercedes Benz while they're poor. If it's that easy and it's happening all the time, you're poor. Go do it. See, I'm crazy enough. I have said that. I've been in the barbershop. Now, I saw what you drove in here on. If pastors is just stealing Benzes, I saw your car. You ought to be a pastor and steal a couple Benzes yourself. If it's that easy, if it just happens like that and that every pastor just gets to do that, give it a shot. And you'll find out. So, I, 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 uh, 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 we're going to, there's the devil, so in discord. And we root off the devil and we find out Susan ain't your problem, it's Chris. A third thing happens, both of them get mad at me. Both of them mad at me. Because I done made it awkward for both of them. Because neither one of them really want peace. They want their position. Susan don't want to be forgiven. Yeah, you just assume since she was talking about Susan, Susan's going to come in there and want her position clear. No, I don't want nothing to do with her either. I don't even know why you called me in here. Okay. But you want to know why I'm blessed? Because guess who don't come in my office spreading gossip anymore? It's one less person. And eventually, guess who knew none of the office gossip? Your boy. Because it wasn't safe to tell me. You can't come in my office and tell me nothing unless you actually wanted something done about it. So guess who had peace at the office? I was friends with everybody because I ain't know what nobody did. I ain't know who was cheating on their wife, who was getting together in the copy room, who was stealing credit for presentations. I ain't know none of that. I just thought everybody was great. Hey, everybody. Hey. Seriously, they, the people would come to the office like, how do you like everybody and how does everybody like you? Well, I don't know that everybody likes me, but I don't know nothing about nobody. So, hey, Susan, we getting Jimmy Jones. You want some? Come on. Like, don't you know what she did in the meeting yesterday? Nope. I got peace. I'm blessed. Y'all the one stressed coming to work. Not me. You the one think you got enemies in every meeting. Not me. I, people thought I was ignorant. No, I was blessed. I was blessed. I have joy coming to work. I ain't got no problems. I don't need to sit down with HR. I'm good. I'll be at the coffee machine talking to everybody. Then what he talk? Oh, really? They be like, she was just talking about you yesterday. I wasn't there. <laughs> and they still sent me my paycheck on Friday, so what? Oh, man. Y'all can't focus on what really matter. Say, she ain't stopped my paycheck. I don't care what she said. Right. <laughs> See, peacemaking is a cycle that produces peace in your environment in the people around you. And it is not the avoidance of it. Peacemaking is an active engagement. Because here's the other thing, and I want to get into this and why godly peace is so important. Most peacemaking happens in private before the public results of it happen or are seen. So that's why I said they would have to come into my office and we would have to have a private conversation first. Or any peacemaking that happens in the world, like Israel and, and, and Palestine. Don't be fooled by what the newspapers are saying. There are conversations happening. Y'all know that, right? Do not be fooled by the protests and people that's over here what we're saying. There's conversations happening. The real ones we don't know about until years later. The ones that really get something done. And my military people know what I'm talking about. The ones that really move the needle is the ones the president can't know, we can't know he's really willing to entertain that conversation. Y'all know the president, we don't negotiate with terrorists. He talked to people he don't want us to know we talking to. Y'all ain't gonna make me do this today. 
<laughs> he gonna get on. We don't negotiate with terrorists. I, you know, he done got off the phone with some terrorists right before he got on the news. Because peacemaking is internal, it is private before it's ever public. That is why peacemakers are blessed because what it says is an internal work has started in them first. God has done a private work in you before he ever requires you to do anything public. Mm. That's why let's go to Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verse 12 says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. Here's the key. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ, Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Stop. This is what's so important. And, and, and a lot of people misunderstand how God and, and, and the point of how he calls us to live. Is people think, you know, Christianity is this list of do's and don'ts, right? Like we'll read Colossians 3 of things with you. He told me to forgive. You, 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 you've been forgiven, so you also must forgive. So the list of things to do gets one thing longer. But this is what I want you to know about everything God calls for us to do is what he calls for us is really to have the appropriate response to what's been done. Holy, listen to me, you all, holy and right living comes about not as an adherence to rules, but a response to God. Right living is born out of right response. You're doing this wrong if you're doing it because you were told as opposed you're doing it because of what God did first. Y'all ain't hearing me. I live right because of a res it's, it's a response. Like eventually, eventually, when you mature, you grow into it being responsive. It's like teaching your kids to say thank you. When they're little and somebody gives them, you know, a dollar, you, you do what? Say thank you. And they, well, if you're a good parent. I don't know these days, uh, everybody ain't. These days, everybody ain't get to teach your kids not to beg memo. <laughs> I mean, my parents, y'all don't go in here begging. But then also, if you see someone do something nice for your kid, you do what? You say, tell them thank you. And when they're little, they only care about the dollar, but they do what they're told, and they say thank you. But as you mature and your lessons with them grow deeper, as an adult, when someone does something kind to you, you shouldn't be saying thank you because it's the appropriate thing. Gratefulness for what they did compels thank you. If you're still saying thank you because it's socially required, you are an immature person. You are not in touch with the reality that nobody has to give you anything. Nobody has to stop on the side of the road and pick you up. The AAA tow truck don't have to come to you. Nobody has to, nobody owes you anything. So when they do, eventually, thank you is responsive. 
it is not required. Gratefulness says, oh, nobody had to do this for you and did this for me. Thank you. I know sincere thank yous versus thank you because I have to. Don't we all? You know when somebody's really grateful for what you did as opposed to when they just saying thank you because that's the appropriate thing to do. And I came to tell you, God calls our behaviors. If you read and search your scriptures, right and holy living is always a response to what God has done. Even the scriptures tell us, he all, God always, just know this, God always goes first. We love him, why? Because he first loved us. In due time, while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't wait to make sure we would accept Christ to send him to Calvary. He did it first. And then said, repent and accept Jesus Christ. That's why he says, let the peace of God dwell richly in your hearts. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Being a peacemaker is responsive, is a response to the peace that should already be in your heart. You and I shouldn't need to fight because we ain't fighting with God anymore. We have the ultimate peace. I'm a peacemaker because I'm at peace with God. And Jesus Christ did that for me. I couldn't do it for myself. So gratefulness is what causes me to be at peace with other people. You know why I don't have to fight everybody that says something about me? Y'all know why? Literally, you don't have to chase down when people say bad things about you. Like, you, that should be water off a duck's back. Seriously, do you guys know how much peace is in not having to worry about what people say about you? You want to talk about peace? If you've never been there, let me tell you, the water's wonderful over here. When you don't have to chase rumors, you don't have to chase what they're saying. You don't have to try to correct every misunderstanding. Come on in, the water's fine. It's beautiful over here. There's a couple of things, a couple of reasons why. I'm fine. I'm not faking, y'all. I'm actually fine they talked about me crazy at the office they talked about me crazy at the church and guess what I'm fine I ain't saying who said it this is how you know I'm fine because you can tell me something crazy I don't go who and what else did they say Anybody that's been in a conversation with me and you have acknowledged that you heard somebody say something crazy about me. It ain't a whole lot of y'all, but you know who you are. And one thing you can testify to is I ain't had no questions. I ain't want to know who. I ain't say what else. I wasn't looking for no details. I ain't say tell me more. And who else was all in the room? And then what did they say? I ain't do none of that. I said, oh, really? That's unfortunate. That's about all you're going to get out of your boy. Really? That's really unfortunate. Because I'm the pastor. I know somebody talking crazy about me. I ain't doing my job if ain't nobody said nothing crazy about me. But there's a couple of reasons why I have peace. It's I know, number one, Jesus died for me. You think he going to let you stop me from getting what's for me? You think he died to save my soul to bless me that all riches would abound towards me and your gossip about me is going to stop what God has for me the devil is a liar and a deceiver of the brethren say what you want say what you've been saying say on because God loves preparing tables for me in the presence of my enemy so when I hear crazy talk come up I say I get ready to eat I start tucking in my beard Y'all think I'm playing. Because the enemy talking crazy is a sign God on his way to you. Because if God ain't about to do nothing for you, through you, or with you, the devil has no use for you. He won't say anything about you, no rumors about you, no bad 
estimations of your intention. If God has something he's getting ready to do, give or show you, most certainly the enemy is going to try to stop it. So I'm like, oh, it's time to eat. God can prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You can't stop me from eating. You crazy. But what you can do is steal my peace. See, that's what the devil, I wish y'all knew a little something about spiritual warfare. The devil know how to win more ways than one. He can let you get what God has for you and you got it mad. You got it with no peace. You got it frustrated. You got it with half your hair falling out. He said, if I can't stop God from giving it to you, I can stop you from enjoying it. I can't stop God from giving you that promotion, but I can give it, I can have you paranoid looking over your shoulder every day you come into the office with your new job. That's, that's the kind of thing spiritual warfare does. It doesn't have to stop naturally what's happening, but it can upset your spirit so you can be walking in what God has for you with frustration, aggravation, torment, fear of losing it. I ain't going to let y'all steal my peace. I want to walk into the blessings of God with my peace. He ain't going to do it. I know that too well. I've watched it happen too many times. I've watched too many new pastors become a pastor and can't pastor because they're too paranoid about what folks saying about them. How people comparing them to the last guy. I ain't got time for that. I can't do nothing about it. <laughs> what you want me to do? I'm not Adolphus cast. I never will be. All I can be is me. I will. Hey. What we gonna do? How about we all just try to make the best of the hand we got? I can't do nothing. So what I'm not gonna do is chase it down. I can't do it. So just so you know, I, I don't, mm -mm. I'm a peacemaker because I let the peace of Christ dwell in my heart. Because second, you gotta know what the work Jesus did on Calvary was. You know what the, what what Satan is called in Revelation? He is the accuser of the brethren. His job is to say bad stuff about you and I. That's his job. On judgment day, he's going to have the opportunity to accuse all of us to God. Now this is why you got to really let the peace of Christ dwell in your heart. This is the thing about the devil. He gonna be saying some true stuff about us. This way you gotta thank God for Jesus Christ. He ain't gonna have to lie on us. He's gonna tell the truth and it's gonna be on the screen. Look at him, God. He's gonna tell the truth. He's going to show stuff that we thought nobody else would see. But Jesus Christ, y'all, this is why you got to be a peacemaker. Because accusers stand on the side of Satan. When you share, the, I'm not, it's, like I say, you ain't got to be lying. But you always carry in the bad information, the negative report, the negative interpretation. You are on the side of the accuser of the brethren. And guess who Jesus is? The opposite of the accuser is the mediator. Oh, God. The intercessor. So while the devil is standing at one side of God accusing you and I, relaying the worst about us, relaying the worst of our intentions, lying on us and telling the truth, many people that spread gossip, they with the devil. But I choose to be with God. He is the mediator between God and man. He stands interceding on our behalf that if I did do something wrong, Jesus doesn't go, see, he did it again. He goes, God, don't look at the bad news. Look at me. So you could put a bad word out there on me. Guess what you just caused Jesus to do? Speak up for me. Y'all ain't going to make me know. Talk about me. That just means Jesus is going to talk about me more. Keep my name on your lips that you will keep my name on Jesus' lips. 
Tell him what I did. That means Jesus is going to tell God about me some more. Jesus is going to say, don't look at that. Look at me. I died for him, God. Yep, he did do that. But look at me. Yep, he did say that. But don't worry about that. Look at me. That's why I promise you, I let the peace of Christ, it's the inside job first, is the reason why I could be at peace. Because it's an, I, 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 I meditate on that fact that I don't have to know if it's true or false. I know Jesus is going to intercede for me. I was at a service the other day. Somebody remarked, because I saw a lot of people hadn't seen in a long time. And, uh, and my kids say it too. I go places, they say, you know everybody, you know a bunch of people. And I give the hardest handshakes, the biggest hugs. Somebody remarked, seemed like everybody, you know, because they was gathering all of the ministers and everything in the back. So I said, everybody that walked in seemed like they was your best friend. Because I'm like, what? I'm doing all these big hugs. What's going on, man? And the reason why is because I'm so free. See, the reason why y'all are back here standing because you don't know who said what about you. You got all of this leftover beef. I ain't got none. I'm happy to see you. I want to know how you doing. How your mom and them doing? What you been up to? I hope God been blessing you. And what people see is I'm sincere. I'm not faking. And guess what? Some of the people I know done talk bad about me and this church, but I still want to know how you're doing. I hope God blessing you like he blessing me. <laughs> Say what you want. I hope he blessing your church like he blessing L.A.M. Because your talk show can't stop it. How you doing? Because God prepares tables for me in the presence of my enemies so I can be happy in front of them, have peace in front of them. Joy in front of them. Genuinely want to know how you doing. Because I'm blessed. The peace of Christ is dwelling richly in my heart. So then I can go and make peace. Now, lastly, here's what making peace is not. It is not avoidance of the wrong that was done. Because what just about everybody in that same room will tell you about me is Dorian don't skip over no principles. I, I don't let wrong slide in front of me. I don't care who it is. I am not a peacemaker. See, the difference between a peacemaker, I told you, it's not an avoidance. It is a willingness to go head on into conflict to resolve it. Because one of the reasons why you're like, that mean people talk about you? You know why a lot of people talk about me? It's because I don't let wrong slide. I be like, you know you're wrong, doc. You know you're wrong, fam. You know that ain't right? I will say it. And people don't like people that'll say the truth. I don't care who they are, what their title is, how important they are, how big their church is. Right is right, wrong is wrong. And I've been like that all my life. I'm trying to get better at saying with, with grace. I just haven't always said it with grace. So, <laughs> so I'm growing in grace. But if you're a peacemaker, here's, here's the thing. is Jesus Christ is our peace. And what did he do? He didn't avoid sin. He went head on at sin and overcame it. Like he didn't just say God ignore their sin. He died for it. He gave himself for it. That is why he is qualified to intercede on our behalf. It's because he didn't say ignore sin. He said, look at my sacrifice. So being a peacemaker is not an avoidance of wrong. It is doing the work to produce right. That's what I said, just avoiding gossip, that's the first step. But being the person that can produce right out of those wrong situations is it because they also the last thing the literal interpretation of blessed are the peacemakers are blessed are those that preach the gospel because it is the gospel of peace because i don't want you just not fighting with each other i don't want you fighting with god anymore i don't want you at conflict with god beautiful are the feet of those that carry glad tidings this is the gospel of peace so you're blessed if you're willing to share with how are you gonna not tell nobody about jesus 
we've got people that have been made at peace with God and then don't tell anybody else about that peace they got. I wonder if you got that peace. Because if you got it, it's too good not to tell somebody else about it. You tell them about your favorite restaurant. It's human nature if you run into something good to do what? Tell somebody about it. That's why the best marketing ain't a commercial is what? Word of mouth. Anybody with a business will tell you the best kind of marketing isn't a radio commercial. It's word of mouth. It's somebody telling others about your store, your restaurant, your clothes. Why? Because inherently we know human beings talk about things that were actually good. That's why I'll believe you before I believe the commercial. They got paid to say it was good. That's why I don't look at a hotel's website when I'm looking at it to book it. I look at TripAdvisor. And then the pictures I want to see are the pictures taken by the traveler. No, 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 no. I don't want the hotel's pictures. I want traveler photos. I want those bad iPhone pictures. I do not want the airbrush. Oh, y'all don't know. If you're looking at a hotel, I tell you, you want the real people reviews. Not, I don't want the reviews on a hotel website either. I don't know what those are. I want to see the funny looking people in their pictures at that hotel. They be in them too. That's a little weird to me. I don't want to, see, you know, why are you? I want to see the hotel room. I don't want to see you in it. Now it's gross. I know somebody's been in it before me. You know, you have to kind of ignore that fact that somebody was just in this bed a few hours ago. Like, <laughs> seriously, go anywhere public is an exercise in ignoring the reality of what's happening there. That somebody had that fork in their mouth. <laughs> they never don't know you at a restaurant. And I'm bringing my own plastic fork and knife from now on. Because every now and then it dawns on me. This fork was literally just in some person's mouth. See, it's true, it's true, but I like the reviews from the person. I want to hear about that restaurant from somebody that ate there because when we run into something good, we are compelled to tell about it. Have you run into the peace of God? Has he really given you peace? Is the peace of God dwelling in your heart or are you allowing the cares of this world to choke the seed? Are you allowing what people say and the conflict you run into to choke that peace? Because the enemy loves to do that. He can't take what God has given you, but he can choke it with all sorts of things and stuff. And too many of us, and I'm telling you, the only way to combat that is by being a peacemaker, not a conflict avoider but a peacemaker. And people will, like I said, they might not like you, but they're going to know you're a son of God. They might not invite you to the party, but they're going to call you a son of God. They might kick you out the group chat, but they're going to call you a son of God. They might not let you into the gossip circle, but I promise you, anybody that kick you out because you want to be right, you want to be out of that group. You do. Your life will be better. I promise you. It'll be so much more peaceful. So much more peaceful. There's a lot of things we feel like we want, but it robs us of our peace. Social media is one of those things. You know you better when you're not looking at everybody else's life. But you still got to log in and scroll. You know everybody's house look better than yours. You're like, where they get all this money from? How the kitchen look that nice? Kitchens are what I know. It's like, hey, everybody get all these nice kitchens. But they start handing out all these countertops. Everybody just be having so much fun. How y'all get all this vacation money? That's what I really want to know. Who? Do you, I, every time I look at, do you know how much these hotels cost? Like, how are they in that nice hotel? That, that infinity pool. How? how? Since I was scrolling, like, I'm not poor. And that, oh, how, did, how are they staying there? Y'all got to share me, with me the hookup. Like, I used to have the hookups when I was younger. I done ran out of the hookups because I'm a little too saved for them now. But if you got any saved person hookups, because I used to have all of them back in the day. 
What? I can get what you need for the low. But I'm trying to live right now, so all my hookups done dried up. I don't, I don't know. I used to get it all. The laptops for the low. My brother in our house used to be the stop. They have it all, cause, but I'm saved. So I be paying full price. That like they must be you. That must be a hustle. I be hating. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna confess. I be hating. They must. That's that, that's some kind of hustle. Ain't no way. <laughs> See, then I be making myself feel better. See, you saved and you be paying full price. That's why you at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> but you know scrolling that doesn't make you feel good and you have more peace when you don't see all that other stuff but you just still do it something calls you to it and that's the same thing with, 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 with discord and negative reports negative, we have a disposition our nature is attracted to negative reports I know it, it, it's, it's, it's nature Peace has to be made. Chaos happens. Peace has to be made. Chaos happens. It's a law of thermodynamics. Things tend towards disorder. Y'all know that, right? It's a law of physics in this earth. Things tend towards disorder. Like disorder happens without effort. While order requires effort. Like you have to act on things to create order. It's like a deck of cards. You never throw them into a stack. As soon as you stop exerting force on them, what do they do? They become less ordered. Like that's, 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 that's the law that operates in the earth. It is a law of thermodynamics. Things tend towards disorder. So in order to get the cards back into order, you have to act on them. You have to put your hands on them and order them. You have to make order. If you leave things alone, they will become less ordered. Stop working on your house. Guess what it's going to do? Fall apart. It ain't going to stay together. Those seams ain't going to get tighter like I left here 10 years ago. And all the gaps. No. It's going to fall apart. We have to act on things to keep them together. That's what we as human beings who have been called to be caretakers of this earth is falling apart because it's broken. So in order for it to stay together, we have to keep putting it together. And peace is the same way. Chaos is easy. Bad reports, easy. Negativity, easy. Peace has to be made. And you got the power to do it. Don't let the devil lie to you. And making peace is a blessed thing because that means you have peace. And your environment will have peace as well. And people will see you and call you the son of God. Now for some people that will call them to you and other people that will repel them. But they'll be able to see it. She got peace. And say, I see you at the mall. At, at, I know you, peace all around you. Like I ain't get this craziness with y'all around here. All this backbiting and gossiping y'all doing. I ain't getting into that. I hope if I come to all y'all job, that would be the aura around you. Is he or she, they don't be into that with us. That's the son of God over there. He doesn't do the mess. It's one of God's children over there. They don't do the mess. They don't do the stuff we do. And like I said, it's not because I'm trying to follow rules. It's out of a grateful heart. It's out of a heart that has been given peace. It's out of a heart that has been forgiven. It's from a person that I got a mediator. You can say what you want. Jesus going to say something better. The blood of Jesus Christ, it speaks a better word. Y'all ain't going to make me do that tonight. That's what Hebrews says. Abel's blood cried out from the ground, accusing his brother of killing him. But the blood of Jesus Christ speaks a better word. It does not speak an accusatory word and say, look what they did to me. It says, don't look at what they did to me. Look at me. So that's why you can have peace and you can make peace wherever you go. Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise. God bless you. I love you, sir. Now listen, everybody here, the sign up for McRest. We're going to have a whole presentation about it, but we will be housing 
um, uh, uh, I guess the technical word for it now is unhoused people. Now, y'all laughing, see? Don't let your good be evil spoken of. I'm trying to say the right thing and they're giggling at me. I know homeless is non, it's unhoused. Because it's the same way, like we don't want, my, my, my ancestors weren't slave, slaves, they were people who were enslaved, right? Like that's a distinction. It's a distinction. They were people. They were smart people, mothers, daughters, sons, doctors, lawyers, all sorts of things. And then were enslaved. So it's not, they're not a, they're a person that doesn't have a place to stay right now. And we're going to give them a place to stay at the end of this month, beginning April 28th. I need everybody to go sign up. I'm online. We're going to create an online sign up. But right now, the sign up sheet is here in the building. And I need it. This is an all hands on deck event. Now, I don't know what your schedule is like, but the wonderful thing about McRest is there, a time, there is a time slot and a thing that everybody can do. It's essentially a 24 hour round the clock thing. So we got time slots that will be conducive for what you can do. Even if you can't do a lot, if all of us do a little, it will not be a heavy burden on anybody. The only thing that's confined to men is because we're housing all men. Only men can stay overnight. So we do have an overnight shift. That's an all male time. But other than that, there's a lot of things to do. We cook breakfast, pack lunches for them, cook dinner for them when they come back. There's cleaning. Bed, uh, uh, bedding and clothes to wash. There's a lot of things that we do to provide a wonderful environment for them. You could just come some days to fellowship while we're eating dinner. We pride on ourselves on they're going to eat the best when they're here at LAM because they rotate from church to church for a week, for all 52 weeks out of the year. So we, we've always prided ourselves on having the best food. That's the testimony. And, uh, but also good, strong fellowship while, we're, while they're here. So uh, some of y'all just come and have a bite and fellowship with the men while they're here. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. So we need everybody to sign up to do your part. Amen. Also, uh, the young adults, 18 to 35, have, uh, uh, will be having um, an immersive prayer experience here at the church, 7 p.m. Friday night. So everybody, 18 to 35, be here. The presence of the Lord will be here uh, uh, to answer prayers. So come and have your petition heard and your prayer responded to here in the house, 7 p.m. And I'm excited. Sunday, everybody be here, 8 or 10. Invite somebody. We got a, a, a wonderful surprise for you on Sunday. So y'all tell everybody, be at church on Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we'll see you in prayer on Thursday. Go in peace.